Hello everyone, it's Nancy Amato, the Be More Stamper. Welcome, welcome. It is Saturday, March 23rd already. My goodness, where is the time going, right? But welcome today. We are going to make a quick and cute, fun little card here with a brand new stamp set called Latte Love. Okay, this is part of our online exclusives, so you will not see it in any print publication, but you can see it in my online store when you go to nancyamato.stampinup.net. So it is right there. There is a bundle for this as well. You can get coordinating dies that go with some of these images and some fancy, fancy coffee press dies and everything. But for right now, I just purchased the stamp set and the fun designer series paper. So let me talk about the stamp set first. It is a photopolymer stamp set. So that helps me, especially when I'm trying to line things up. I don't know about you, but that is um, the type of stamp set it is. And then I also purchased the designer series paper. So let me just go through these patterns real quickly with you. So the colors are Lost Lagoon, Calypso Coral, Early Espresso, Pecan Pie, and Petal Pink. Okay, and white. So here is a nice Lost Lagoon stripe. And then on the back side of it are some coffee splotches. All right. You can tell I've used some of this paper already, right? Here are some coffee beans, a pattern of coffee beans with um, Calypso coral and white. And then the back side of this, this looks like chocolate bark that I make at holiday time, but I know it's supposed to be looking like coffee. Here is another one also with some petal pink and um, pecan pie. And then on the back side of that, there are those little hearts, you know how they put the um, little tops, you know, that cream on the top. I'm not a coffee person, so I'm not sure what that's called. Here is a beautiful plaid here. And on the back side of that are some coffee beans. And then let me get to the pieces I haven't cut up yet. <laughs> so this one is little teeny tiny coffee cups. Okay, and spoons and coffee beans. And then on the reverse side are some larger coffee cups. Now, I do know some of the dies that go with this stamp set. I believe coordinate with these coffee cups, but I do know they definitely coordinate with, there is one die to cut out this coffee cup. And then on the reverse side of that are some coffee rings like would, that would be left on your table or countertop after you've had your coffee. Okay, so the designer series paper is also an online exclusive. It is $12.50. The pattern we're gonna use today is this Lost Lagoon stripe, as you can see. So let me just tuck these back into my package real quickly. Whoops, that looks like I knocked the camera real fast as well. Alrighty, so let's get started. Let's get out the stamps that we're going to use here and put them on some blocks, right? So here is our hello, let's catch up. All right, we're going to need our coffee cup, looking down on our coffee cup. So that is that one right there. Um, for our envelope, we're going to use the coffee cup that we're looking at from the side. So let's get that one ready a while as well. And then let's do this little milk pattern again. Well, you know what? Today I used the heart one. Let's do, let's do this little milk frothy pattern, whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it is. If you're watching this live, comment below what that is called because I do not know. Foam, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I love the smell of coffee. But man, I really cannot 
stand the taste of coffee. It's just way too bitter. I think I would be one of those, you know, people that would have a little milk with their coffee or a little coffee with their milk kind of idea. All right, then we need that one as well. And I think that's it. All right, because we're going to do the different foamy, frothy thing on the top. Hey, Beth, thanks for joining me today. Hope you're having a great day. All righty. So we have all of our stamps mounted and ready to go. Let's talk about the paper and the sizes that we're going to need to make this card. Okay, I have my little cheat sheet here, <laughs> just in case I forget, which is very likely. All right, so we are going to need a card base, and this is pecan pie, and this is eight and a half by five and a half, and we're gonna score and fold this at four and one quarter, okay? Normal card base for us. Then we're going to need two pieces of early espresso. Look how, oh my gosh, look how these two colors blend together. I love it. So two layers of early espresso, and they are both cut the same. They are four by five and one quarter. Alrighty, so that's right there. We're going to need another layer of early espresso for the front. And this one is two and one half by three and three quarters. And then as you're cutting this out, you're going to have this little um, strip of leftover early espresso anyway. So this one is just cut at a half inch by three and three quarters. This is the piece that's gonna go right there underneath of our ribbon. We have our Lost Lagoon striped um, designer series paper that goes with this product. And again, I forgot to tell you, it's called a little latte, 12 by 12 designer series paper. So this one is cut at three and three quarters by five. We have that one there. We also have a basic white for the inside cut at the same size, three and three quarters by five. And then this little panel right here is also basic white, and this one is cut at two and one quarter by three and one half, okay? And then we have our basic white envelope, all right? So we will decorate our envelope flap when we are finished. Okay, let's get stamping first. So we are gonna need both of our pieces here, our smaller piece of basic white for the front of the card, and then the larger piece of basic white for the inside. Let's do the front first. And because these are photopolymer stamps, I do want to stamp on top of one of our piercing mats. And the reason for that is that there is no cushion between the photopolymer stamp and the block. And the, providing this little layer of cushion underneath of your cardstock just gives it a little bit of oomph and lets you have a better um, image, okay? So we're gonna stamp our coffee mug here in Lost Lagoon ink. So I have that right there, okay? So we're just gonna tap that ink on and we're aiming for the top part of this piece of basic white. All right, there we go. It can't get any easier than that, right? For right now, I'm gonna close up the Lost Lagoon. We're gonna finish this whole front panel first. So I'm gonna just bring in my little chamois <laughs> right here and just clean off that stamp. Now, for our coffee, we're gonna use their pecan pie ink. And this time, we're going to do this little pattern. Now, I have not stamped with this yet. So, what I'm going to do is just give it a quick old little clean on my chamois. And I'm gonna do a little test run on my scrap paper here, just to make sure looks good. Yes, it does. It looks very good. Alrighty. There was no, it doesn't, didn't seem like there was any residue on that photopolymer stamp. So let's just tap that ink on. 
And you can see it is so easy to line these up. So you can even do, I might even do this one straight on here. Okay. So we just look at where the opening, the top of that coffee mug is, and then we just push this image right in there and we have our coffee in our cup. So stinking cute, right? All right, so I'm gonna just give this a quick wipe with the chamois as well. So we are finished with our pecan pie ink for right now. And now let's just grab our early espresso. Look at this old pad. This is a blast from the past, isn't it? I think I need to treat myself to a new early espresso ink pad soon. <laughs> this one flips open like the old style. All right, so this is where we're gonna put our greeting. So we are just going to tap our ink on gently. You don't want to push really, really hard into your ink pad because then you end up getting ink all over your block and it's just a mess. So there we are and we can see that greeting right through there. This is why I love photopolymers as well. Just push that on there and look, we are finished stamping that front panel. Okay, I'm going to close this up and just give this a quick wipe on my chamois. All right, now let's work on, let's put this one over here. Let's work on the inside panel of our card. So let's open this up and we can see now we're gonna use this coffee mug image. All righty, so we're gonna start the same color pattern over again. So our mug is going to be Lost Lagoon. Okay, let me put that right there. So there is our Lost Lagoon. And I'm putting this up near the top. Okay. I am so happy Lost Lagoon came back, aren't you? This is like one of my go-tos. I love this. It's, it's not a green. It's not a blue. It's kind of a teal-ish kind of color. <laughs> it's just really pretty. And I'm going to not wipe, wipe off that stamp yet because we're going to use the same one for the back. Now our coffee for this mug is this little oval shape here. So I'm opening up my pecan pie again. I'm going to ink up this image and now I'm just aiming for that open area right there. Okay, so there is our coffee right on there. And again, I'm going to not clean this one off because we're gonna use this for the back flap as well. But let's bring in our early espresso. And because this Lost Lagoon is a lighter color and there's so much white in this image, we can put a darker greeting right over top. Okay, so you're the best part of my day is going to go right over top just like that. All right, so that is our inside panel. We're going to just put that aside. Let's bring in our envelope. Okay, so here is what we're going to do for the envelope. So let me bring in my new envelope flap. And I'm just going to open that up and lay the envelope flat on my mat here. And once again, we're going to open up the Lost Lagoon. Now, of course, if you're making a whole bunch of these, you would just make a little assembly line. You wouldn't be opening and closing your ink pads multiple times. <laughs> there we go. So there's our mug. Alrighty. And then we're going to add our coffee to the mug with our pecan pie ink again. that and this time we are going to do a different greeting we are going to use the hello there let's catch up that we put on the front of the card i'm going to put that through the coffee mug there okay so ink that up and we can place it right there and there we go Oh my goodness, this is just so stinking cute. And I don't even like coffee, so, you know, 
<laughs> what can I say? I can pretend it's a chai tea latte, I guess. All right, I am just gonna give a quick bath to all of these stamps that I did not give a little quick scrubby to before. All right, and I can just move these off to the side here. I'm gonna stack them up off screen a little bit. Hopefully they won't all slide, but you know, you never know. Could be kind of a craft -a lanch over there. <laughs> hey, Lisa. Oh, thanks for joining. Yeah, I love this as well. It's just, it is so, so cute. All right, so we have our envelope. I'm gonna put this to the side with all of our pieces. I'm gonna move our ink out of the way because we are finished our stamping. Don't need this anymore. I can put this out of the way. So let's bring in our sample again as our reference. And here is what we are going to do. This one is going to get layered onto this piece of um, early espresso, okay? I guess that's appropriate since, you know, we're talking coffee. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of my Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue here. I'm just running a thin line around all four sides of it. And I like using this adhesive because it gives me a little time to wiggle it into position. I'm finding as I'm getting older, between my fingers and my eyes, <laughs> sometimes it's nice to have that little bit of wiggle time. And then this little piece is just gonna like divide, be a visual divide between the cup and the greeting. So I'm just gonna put a thin little line right here. And put that right on top. Okay. Whoops, make that straight. Again, this is why I like having that wiggle time to get that in the right position. Okay, so for our embellishment for the front of this card, we are going to use our Lost Lagoon. What is this called? Bordered Ribbon. This is from the annual catalog, and this ribbon is retiring. So I would say if you love it, if you love Lost Lagoon, if you want to make a bunch of these cards with the uh, coffee, the you know, this uh, Latte Love product suite here. Get yourself some of this Lost Lagoon ribbon before it's gone, because once it's gone, it's gonna be gone. So we need about eight inches of ribbon. And I have my centimeter side of my paper showing up, so I cannot do that math in my head to do that conversion. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pull my ruler down here. And you can see we're tying this to the side with some linen thread and then we have those little ends of the Lost Lagoon ribbon hanging off. So here's how we're going to do that. We are going to want to attach this Lost Lagoon ribbon to the back here. So I'm going to just bring in my regular stamp and seal. Let me get this going. Okay, I just need a little just a little piece on the back. That's just gonna kind of act as a little placeholder for this ribbon. And then I'm gonna fold this ribbon in half and put the um, loop side to the left. And then I'm just gonna slide this down. Okay. And push that into that adhesive on the back. And that's gonna keep that ribbon steady. All right. Now the front part is still gonna be flappy until we tie it down. So what I like to do is just get myself a block here. And I'm just using this like a weight. <laughs> All right, so let's pull out our linen thread. Our linen thread is not going anywhere. That is staying. So we are happy about that. And then I'm just going to lift up these two little flappies of the ribbon. So I'm putting that linen thread under that. 
And now I'm just gonna tie a regular old bow. So I'm gonna just tie a knot at first, okay? Make sure this is all the way up against the card. So I'm tying a knot. I'm gonna tie another knot right on top of it so this does not come loose. Okay, so that's not going anywhere. No pun intended, right, with the knot. All right, now I'm gonna take this remaining string, make a loop, wrap it around. This is just like tying your shoes. Wrap it around and then pull that other loop through. Okay, and you can make your loops any size that you want. In order to, I'm gonna make keep my loops a little bit bigger because now I'm going to like double knot these loops. Think of when you know you were tying kids' shoes when they were real little and you didn't feel like tying them every 20 minutes. <laughs> you would double knot these loops. There we go. So we know that is not going anywhere. All right, and now we can snip this from the um, spool here and put that right back in. And you can see this little block was just acting like a little weight for me. Okay, so we have that part done. Let's now put our layer of designer series paper on top of our early espresso layer. And again, I just like using this multi-purpose liquid glue. I just run a thin little line around all four sides. I do find that not only does this give me some wiggle time, but I find that because I live in a humid area, that it really keeps my cards together for the long run. Sometimes when I use um, stamp and seal, or more often the old, um, the old snail, if I still have some of those upstairs, sometimes those panels would not stick as well. So that is why I like this bond that I get from the multi-purpose glue as well. And the key is just run a real thin line and you're not going to see it showing on the front side of your card. If you use a real thick line of glue, a real big glob of glue, <laughs> you can tend to sometimes see that, but with a thinner line and you just push it down to smish it all out, I don't see where I put that glue at all. All right, so we have our inside panel layered onto the early espresso. We are gonna put that in the card. So again, a nice thin line. put that over there and I should tell you plus if you have trouble getting a nice thin line because you don't have to squeeze it that hard let's flip this over let's do this for the front panel when you take this cap off you can see there is um, this rubber nib with a hole right in it in the center so let's do that one this time, although it's been in my <laughs> upside down glue holder for a little bit. So let's see if I can shake some of that glue down to the bottom and I can show you how that works as well. Is it coming out? I know this, this one is getting a little bit low. Here I thought I would be able to show that to you. Let's, oh, here's a new one. Let's do it with this new one. This is my backup. This is my guy waiting in reserve, right? All right, so you can see, there we go. We have that glue right on the top. So you can also do this and you can see how it smooths out that line of glue as well. So you don't have a real thick line of glue on there. It kind of just helps spread it out for you. So that's another option as well. So we're gonna put this on to the front and I'm just realizing with that little, that little glue lesson, on my original card, I popped this panel up with dimensionals, but that's okay, because we're popping this guy up with dimensionals. <laughs> we're still using our dimensionals. All right, so we're gonna flip this over and I got my dimensionals out ahead of time and 
of course, they have gone, oh, here they're, I thought they've gone rogue, they've left. There we go. So we are just gonna put one in each corner and then one in the middle. And we're gonna pull off the little wax papers right here. And now we're gonna put this on the front of our card. Okay, there we go. Now that we see how long these ends of this ribbon are, you can keep them that long because they will fit inside of your envelope. Or if you wanna trim them so that they're a little more flush with the side of your card, you can do that as well. There we go. So that's just trimming off those little ends. And then we have this cute, cute, cute little card with not only some ribbon, but some linen thread. And it was quick and easy as well. And then we have our coordinating envelope. Now, another way you can also decorate your envelopes if you'd like, and this is what I did um, earlier this week, I took a panel of the designer series paper with the coffee beans and just cut it and I cut it at, well, let's measure real quickly. I think it was like two and a quarter. Yes, it was two and a quarter by five and three quarters. And that gave me just a little edge around here. And then I just took my snips and cut right around there. So either way to decorate an envelope, envelope flap is just so cute. Which way do you like? Let me know in the comments below whether you like the coffee beans from the designer series paper or the stamped images on the envelope flap. Let me know what you like better. So there we go. So that is our project for today. I am getting ready to go through, I went through my annual catalog with, let me show you what I have here. So I have a pen, <laughs> I have an orange Sharpie, I mean orange highlighter, a yellow highlighter, and then a black Sharpie. Can anybody guess what I'm doing today through, through the mini catalog that is there now in effect? I'm going to be going through with the retiring list, and I will post that list here to this page um, for you. I'm going to, fair warning, the print is so teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, but if you just look at it and you boop, you know, make it wider or make sure you have your reading glasses on. <laughs> so I went through the annual catalog on Wednesday evening. Now today is my day to go through our January through April um, mini catalog and do the same thing. So there are some items that will carry over. So that's my pen right there. I put a C and an O next to those items. There are some items that are retiring and going away. So that's my yellow Sharpie. There are some items, um, especially in the annual catalog, that will have a price increase when the next annual catalog launches um, May the 1st. That's my orange Sharpie right there. And then, I'm sorry, highlighter. And then my Sharpie is to circle things that I want to buy now from the mini catalog that are bundled, that are no longer going to be bundled once the new annual catalog goes live. So that's the Sharpie. I wanted a thick Sharpie so I would remember to order those things that are carrying over <laughs> but won't be bundled. Okay. There is a system, there is a method to my madness, but it's a little bit on, on the crazy, 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 you know? So, oh Beth, you like the stamped envelope better? I kind of do too. You know, between the two of them, I think I, think I kind of like the stamped envelope better as well. But um, the retiring list is long. I'm just going to warn you, I will schedule a time to come on with both of the catalogs and we will go page by page and go through 
each page and I'll explain to you what is retiring that will be gone, never to be seen again, what items are carrying over, but they won't be bundled anymore. So if you want to save the 10%, now is the time to get those items. What items will have price increases? Again, if you want to save a little bit of money, buying those in the annual catalog now before the new annual catalog launches is a good idea. I'm going to be doing that especially for envelopes because they are going up in price. Um, or, you know, things you want to order <laughs> before, before they either get unbundled or the price goes up. So we will do that coming up this week, um, maybe even tomorrow evening. So stick around, check this page. I will let you know way ahead of time. Um, I just have to find some time to get all this done. And then I have my Circles of Retirement stickers here. <laughs> I put these on all of my items that are retiring so that I know what will be leaving um, starting May the 1st. Now, caution, there will be a sale of some of the retiring items starting April the 9th, but everything is while supplies last. So if you find something that you really, really love and you can't live without, I would tend to order it now before it's gone. Because a lot of times what happens is those items will just be gone before the sale even starts. So just something to consider. One thing I'm really sad about that's retiring. Let me see if I can find some. Oh my goodness, here it is. Our vellum, our vellum card stock is going to retire. So this is my last pack. I think I need to buy another pack to get myself through. <laughs> I just love using vellum. I love heat embossing on vellum. I love doing the embossing folders and dry embossing on vellum. I love just having a vellum layer because it just softens things. So our vellum card stock is retiring. Um, I'm hoping it will come back in a future catalog, maybe just not in such a large um, package because you do get 20 sheets of eight and a half by 11 in this package. And I'm sure it's retiring because they didn't sell it that often because one pack will really last you a long, long time. Um, but you know me, I love vellum. I love vellum die cuts. So th that one's that one's a little hard for me to accept, <laughs> but it is what it is, right? So thank you so much for joining me today. I will give you a heads up before I come back live with all of the retiring info and you can grab your catalog and whatever, whatever selection of pens and highlighters and whatnot that you would like. And we'll just go through it together. That is so much easier than looking at that list. So thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great rest of your Saturday and I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.